Hi guys, today we're going to be playing with the Simon Says Stamp limited edition Halloween card kit and I'm going to be doing my 5 and 5 with this kit and let's get started with um, my mummy card. So for this card I used some of the stamps from the kit which I had already stamped out and colored using my Copic markers and this is just a standard A2 size card base and I used white um, out of my stash, not anything that came in the kit, and a piece of craft which also came out of my own stash, and then some paper that did come in the kit. So I just took uh, one of the patterns that I thought would go well as a background for this, and I used a um, little fancy die there to cut it out. I also used my stitch rectangle die on the craft paper because, you know, I love uh, my layers. And now I'm just going to adhere my card all together. So I'll put the craft right onto the card base. And then put my, uh, I used some fun foam on the back of that to pop it up. Put it in the middle. And that one has little bats on it. I know I'm kind of far, so it's hard to see. And then I wanted to have my little guys that I had already cut and colored. Um, I wanted them to have like a back, some kind of background behind them. So originally I thought I wanted to use the black, but then I thought the black might kind of drown them out a bit. So I went with the white one instead. And this, again, I used a smaller stitch rectangle die to cut out the white. And now I'm just going to figure out where I want to arrange my little people and my sentiment. So um, at first I was going to use a strip sentiment, and then I changed my mind and decided to go with the... I think it says witching you, a mummy magnificent Halloween. And I'm just going to cut that down into some thin strips. And once I get that all cut, I have to kind of mess around with it a bit to try to figure out where I want my sentiment to go. Since I've already adhered down my white piece kind of wonky, I was kind of stuck with doing other things kind of wonky so I'm um, just gonna mess around with it a little bit try to figure out where everything is gonna go and this kit was fun I, I admit it was a little bit difficult to come up with the five non card items but because the kit came with a lot of um, things that you could use uh, to to do something other than a card I had the little bag the little treat bag uh, stuff in the kit uh, I ended up going with mostly mostly stuff like that so once I've adhered my sentiment, I'm going to work on my placement of my characters. And I'm just going to glue him straight down and then pop up the, I think I pop up everything else besides him. And these stamps were so, I mean, they are just so cute. I, I had such a good time coloring all these in. Um, the other card, so in this one, you're only going to see four cards because, and I will link in case you didn't see the fifth card. I did a video by itself with the watercolor, um, the whole scene using the spooky tree and some of the other elements from the stamp set. And there's my finished card. I love that little puppy. So cute. And we are on to project number one. And I don't know if you've ever done this with um, when you were a kid, but these are like these super simple little luminaries, and I wanted to use the die that came in the kit. So um, you can use either the little fake luminaries, I mean the little uh, fake, what do you call those, tea lights, or real ones. The video that um, I, you just saw is using a real tea light, because the little fake one wasn't bright enough. So here I'm just going to take my little my little boo ghosts here and I wanted to you to be able to read the boo in the background so I just took a piece of wax paper and put it behind the um, where it says boo basically and I'm just gonna kind of glue down the inner pieces of the word and then I will pull up the letters so that way it you can still read it it says you know, boo, but without, you'll be able to, it'll have something to hold on to, basically. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, there it is. So the wax paper, just your everyday 
normal wax paper and um, these are four by eight and I'm just gonna fold it in half and put my poor little ghost in there and then he's gonna get ironed and put your iron on a medium setting and then just quick pass right over the top you don't even it don't leave it laying on there don't leave it don't make it too hot either medium setting quick pass and then you're fine it'll it'll like glue itself together and make panels so you got to make four of those which I'd already done there's all four and then we're just going to use I'm going to use washi tape you can use any any type of tape that you have that sticks well this washi tape is horrible by the way I bought like this whole little pack of them because it had like all the holidays and I thought oh how cute this is it's got all the holidays and look at all these different Halloween ones it doesn't stick to anything except itself so I ended up every time I used this uh, washi tape um, I had to make sure it was sticking to itself or else it would just come off but it still worked out I mean you just have to kind of fuss with it a bit but I'm sure if you have you know whatever washi tape you have if you're going to use that it'll be fine this is just some really cheap stuff so it wasn't the best but it was so Halloween-y that I, I just used it anyway. So once you've attached all four of your panels to each other, you're just going to use my bone folder to kind of, because you're, you're going to make a square. And these are like so fun for all the different seasons. This is like a great thing to put out on the patio in the summertime. If you're having a barbecue, you can do this with, you know, using it like a 4th of July um, weddings. This is a, <laughs> a very inexpensive table decoration um, you would just probably do something with maybe some flowers inside of the uh, inside of the wax paper instead of you know or leaves in the fall or the ghosts for Halloween or Christmas you you, you you get the idea these are just some easy we used to do these with kids when they were little so I thought it would be a fun one for for this video and then you just continue to attach them all to each other and that's it. That is all you do. And then you just finish with you reinforcing your corners and then put a tea light in the middle and away you go. And I will leave you with the video of it running again. Terrible video. I know I did it with my iPhone and I had to turn all the lights out just so that you could see it. But that has an actual tea light in it. Not not the fake one. Now we're on to card number two. Well, technically card number three because the other card that I had the other video was card number one. Again, normal, just a two size card base. And I'm using this, this is all papers that came in the kit. The card base will be black and then the panel on the top will be the orange one. And now I'm just gonna cut these down. My last video um, was all about figuring out how to make your own backgrounds um, for your cards. This one is all about the pattern paper. So I basically just, wanted to use all of the pattern paper that I could. So I'm going to cut four panels using the pattern paper and on the first one that I cut with the little spiders that's one and a half by one and three quarters. The top second one with the spider webs is two and a quarter by one and three quarter and then the one under it is one and a half by three and one quarter. And then the, the that last one I just set down is two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I'm gonna cut out my orange panel using my stitched rectangle die, like I always do. And then I'm just gonna arrange my my little panels, my little squares on top of my orange panel. This is Sorry about the sun. This is one of the rare times that I was actually videoing uh, during the day. And my <laughs> my little video station is literally right in front of the window. So once I'm done messing around with these and getting them in there um, evenly, luckily this funky tape runner, even when you kind of think that you're attached really well, you're not. You can just pull that right up and then put it down. So repositioning when you use the funky tape runner is really easy to do. Um, all of my other tapes, you, I can't, there's no way you can reposition it. Once it's down, it just rips your paper to shreds. But it still holds on pretty good. I don't know. I don't know what kind of magic that is, but I like it. 
once you're finished, it doesn't just fall off like you would think it would, considering how easy it is to pull it off. But anyway, I'm going to attach this last panel. And then we will start working on the scene that is going to go on the card. Actually, no, wait, I lied. I still need the two squares in the middle. So I'm just going to use my stitched um, square dies this time, and I'm going to do a black and a white. And I'm just going to layer those on top of each other. And that's just the base for the little, the little spooky scene that goes in the middle. This kit came with uh, the ephemera pack, which is what I'm using for most of these cards. Which makes the cards and all these projects really quick. You, you, the stamps are phenomenal and they're fun to play with. But if you need to make some quick, um, some quick projects or quick cards, this is a good kit for all that because you can knock out these treat bags and these cards, um, pretty, pretty fast. Which is why I actually get to do a whole five and five on one, on one video. Go, I'm not gonna have to split this one up. So now I'm just figuring out placement, and I'm gonna glue. Uh, the headstone right to my little panel there. I'm really trying not to say um so much. I apologize. I'm I'm working on it. It's really hard though when I'm trying to think of the word. I did start taking notes and putting them down in front of me so that I can refer to the notes. But then I start watching the video and I forget where I am on the notes and it it turns into another um. So now I'm just gonna pop up my little spider and it. I wanted it to kind of. By the time I figured it out, I thought well. Maybe the spider could be saying spooky. So I'm just going to attach it right over the spider. And then once I did that, I thought, why is he just floating there? So I took some of my string, the black and white string, and I'm just going to put, uh, it's like a like a web behind him. And I just kind of tucked it behind one of, where, where I could pull it up easily without anything falling apart is where I, I put the string. And that completes that card. Now these are the treat bags. And these, this right here came in the, came in the kit and I have everything off to the side there. So you can see everything that's inside that box right there. And I decided that I wanted not to just have a bag with some candy in it, but something kind of hanging, something kind of fun on the top because they're just going to throw the bag away. But I thought the little ghost would be cute um, to keep and hang somewhere on a, on a little dresser knob or I don't know, wherever, put it on the refrigerator. So I cut out a whole bunch of the ghosts from the different papers, one from Pattern and then some from the other papers that came in the Simon Says Stamp kit. And I'm going to, the Pattern paper is kind of thin and I wanted it to be thicker anyways. So the cardstock is, is thick cardstock that came in the kit. And so now I'm going to make like a backer behind the Pattern paper ghost. And I don't want the little pieces of the face and the word to fall out. So I'm just going to glue some pieces on top and now I'm going to take the little ghost and I'm going to glue him directly to the green cardstock. And I mean if you didn't want to cut it out and have to go through all that you could probably fussy cut around the ghost fairly easily but I didn't I didn't want to do that. So while that's drying we're going to start putting together the bag. Again, super fast, easy, easy um, gift ideas to give out. And more of my cheap washi tape. It's cute. The washi tape is cute, but it is so cheap. Anyway, so once I'm done fussy and with it, trying to get it, that's the other thing, is getting it to come apart. It just wants to rip. I'm just going to kind of put a little bit, put some of those pumpkins down on the bottom. Turn it over, and same thing, got a attach it to itself or it'll just fall off. And this it's not just that it's I'm I'm doing it on slick surfaces because I thought, well maybe it's just because everything that I've been putting it on is kind of slick and maybe that's why it's not stick no, it doesn't stick to paper either. It's it's not even it's not even worthy of holding down my dies on my paper because it won't even hold the dies in place. But since these little bags are just gonna go in the trash, it doesn't matter. Now I'm gonna pick out a topper. And these are just folded on the score line, and there's already tape on the inside. So you just pull off one of the pieces of, of backing, and then you just line up your bag on the inside, and you push down the one side, 
and then you can open your bag up and fill it up. And once you have your bag filled up, you just take the tape, the um, sticky stuff off the uh, top, and then put it together. And that's pretty much it. Now it's just decorating, so we'll go back to the ghost. And for the word boo, I'm just going to pull out the pieces that are on the inside. And I'm trying to figure out how I wanted to do this. If I wanted the word inside or if I wanted the letters inside. Not the word inside. That was silly. Whether I wanted to put the letters back in, which I decided no. And then I thought, I have this other one sitting here. So I'm going to put the black letters into the ghost and leave the green behind so you can see the, the green from behind the ghost. So I'm just going to fill in. It's kind of like inlaying it back in to the original hole that it came from. Managed to get a piece of the B stuck behind it. So I had to pull it out with my little my little picker there. And there it is. And then I'm also gonna put the eyes in there from the from the black cardstock. There is my little ghost. I always have to put the pin back. I know I always take up time in the video to put the pin back in there, but if I don't, that it just dries up so fast that it's a pain. I'm gonna use my crocodile to cut a hole in his poor little head. And there's my spooky Halloween string. And I'm just gonna thread that through and make like a little place where you can hang your ghost. Some people decorate their their trees. Like my aunt, she decorates her tree for every holiday, every season. So I mean if you did that you could put it on you could put this little ghost on your tree. But I'm gonna have him hanging down from underneath the topper on the bag. So I'm just making a little knot to hang him from. And then I'm just gonna use some scotch tape to hold it in place. And that's underneath where the topper goes, so you won't see the tape anyway. So it'll just be kind of hanging there. And now we're going to decorate the topper with some elements from the kit, from this own its own little bag kit. I'm just trying to figure out what I wanted to put next to the Happy Halloween, and it's going to be the spider. He wins. It came with some adhesive, um, foam adhesive in the in the little kit, but it was too big for the spider, so I just grabbed one of my little ones and popped him up on top. And that is the completed little bag. When you're done filling it up, you just pull the backing off of that adhesive and attach it just like I did there after I already put some candy in it. That's it. Pretty quick. If you didn't want to make the little the little hanging boo tags um, for the inside for the bags, I mean this would take you literally the whole entire kit. It's probably take you 15 minutes to put together. Now we're on to the next card, and because I wanted to play with this pattern paper, every one of the cards that I did has some type of a, a layering of pattern paper behind it, and I picked three of the patterns that I thought would look nice together, and I have an orange card base and then a black panel, and I'm going to cut down each strip. So that strip is one and a quarter by five. The second strip is one and five five eighths. And that little trimmer doesn't have a five eighths, so I had to kind of go in between the two, but it's approximately one and five eighths. And then the third one is three quarters. And these are all going to be trimmed down to five so that they will fit across that black panel, which I will use my die on, my stitch die, and then I'm going to just adhere it directly to the orange card base, and then each one of those, after I figured out it was five, I wasn't sure with the stitch rectangle, I wasn't sure what size it made it um, lengthwise, so I had to measure it with my I measured it with my little ruler and ended up, it's five and a quarter, so I ended up cutting the panels down to five so that they would go 
you know, just inside. And I'm going to pop those up using some foam adhesive. Just place them all along. The pattern papers that came in this kit are so cute. I love the way they look. They all match with, I mean the whole kit obviously, they probably pay someone quite a lot of money to match all this stuff up in these kits before they send them out to us, but it just makes them so easy to do all these projects in these cards when you buy card kits instead of, they, they just do all the work for you. I'm terrible at matching papers and I don't know terrible at it. So there's all the strips attached and then I've got all my little ephemera pieces that came in the kit. I also had um, cut out and colored some of the other stamped images and I wanted to use them. Those are just extras and I wanted to kind of stick them in wherever. And that I decided to put um, a black base behind him just because that's the one that I'd cut out earlier and then didn't use because he was getting drowned out by the pattern paper. So I thought putting that, that little black uh, panel behind him would help pop him out so that he wouldn't get lost in the pattern behind it. Now I'm just gonna pop up my little eek sentiment and then place my little ghosts and my pumpkin. It wasn't too hard to fussy cut out the pieces, some of them. I would never try to cut out the tree, um, fussy cut out that tree, but some of the other things were pretty easy. Now I'm gonna make uh, rice top, rice throwers, tossers, however you wanna say it, but these are stuff that you used to, we used to make for weddings, and you put the rice in and throw it at the bride and the groom when they're leaving, which we don't do any, anymore because it's really bad for the birds. But the, the little rice, tossers are kind of fun to throw other things in. So for this one, like you could put M&Ms or some other small hard candies in them. So I'm going to start with a six by six panel, which came in the kit. It's just a regular page that came in the kit. This other paper also came in the kit and I cut those down to three strips and they're one and a half inches by six inches. And then I scored it every quarter of an inch all the way across. And this is to make a rosette. So then you're just going to accordion every one of those papers the strips that you did and I'm using a hot glue gun because it is a pain in the neck to do it with glue this is much faster and it holds better than glue does because once you start pulling on those accordions it comes apart too easily so hot glue your ends together and then kind of let that dry the circles is a two inch and a one inch circle and those are just I just use dies from my stash and those are to hold your rosette together so this is a process that's probably easier with two, but I only have me, and so I didn't have a, a partner to hang on to the circle in the back, so I'm just doing it by, by myself, which you'll see, or <laughs> sometimes it comes out really wonky, but it's okay, because you can't see the back circle. You'll see what it is. So once that dries, I'm gonna take my hot glue gun in the two inch circle, and I'm gonna put hot glue on that two inch circle. I'm gonna show you how to put the rosette together right now. So the way that you're gonna put it together is like this, you squeeze it together, just like that. So you wanna put the hot glue on the two inch circle, a whole bunch of it. And then you're just gonna close and squeeze and then pounce it on top of the circle. So the circle in the back can kind of be in weird places, but as long as it's holding your rosette together, usually you're not gonna see the rosette. If you're gonna see both sides of it, if you're making these for something else, then you might wanna get another pair of hands to help you. Um, when you close it, you do it the other way, and then they would put the circle on the top while you're holding it shut. Because see where it, where it ended up is like nowhere near the middle, but it's okay because you're not gonna see the back of this. So now let's make the rice tosser. Um, you just need, this is just the six by six panel. And I'm gonna take some strong score tape and I'm just gonna run it right down the side. And you're gonna leave the backing on the score tape until you are ready to put it together. And now I'm just gonna give it a roll just to try to 
start putting it in the position, you know, it's trying to give it a little bit of a memory so it's a little bit easier. And then I'm going to pinch the corner at the end. Make sure your pa your pattern paper is facing in the right direction where your bottom and your top is going to be because that's that corner right there is the bottom. And then I'm just going to start messing with it and trying to put my corners together as best I can before I take the backing off the tape. And then once I have it where I think it's going to look nice, which was there, I'm going to pull the backing off and I'm going to do the same thing that I was just doing, which is just kind of fussy in with it and sticking the tape down to hold. And then put it together. And then the little opening right there is where you'd put your candy, your M&Ms, or your hard candies, or whatever you were going to put in there. And then you just fold over the top. And that is a rice tosser. And now we're going to decorate the flap that folds over the top. So that's what I made the rosette for. I think I saw this on Pinterest, how they decorated it. I've seen it decorated a bunch of other, other ways at weddings, but I've never seen this before, and I really liked it. So I decided to give it a shot. So I have those little clips. They're little ones from Tim Holtz Alterations. I don't know why, but I bought three packages of those things. I've got a ton of them. And I'm not even sure what I bought them for. Probably for when I was making soap, for the packaging for the soap. Anyway, I'm going to take my string, my Halloween string, and just run it through the top. And I'm going to make a bow. And I'm not going to make you sit through my terrible bow making. Takes me forever to get one straight and looking decent. Set that off to the side, and now I'm going to attach my rosette to the flap on the rice tosser. And I'm just going to use some uh, dots, blue dots. I got these, I, I've had them forever. They were in the drawer, and I pulled them out, and oh, gee, Minis, they are so sticky. Once you put them on, they're not coming off. So I had to make sure you have it where you want it to be with those ones with their gigantic dots. So I'm just going to use one of my clips to hold it shut while I figure out placement for the ephemera that came in the kit. And I'm going to use some more of these dots. And I'm going to put up the little cauldron and the witch. The witch I'm going to pop up. And then the kit also came with some matching puffy stickers. So I'm going to place some of the puffy stickers on there because I thought it needed a little something extra. So I'm going to take, I think I'm using the spider and spider web is what I end up settling on. Put the little spider on the cauldron. And then I kind of mess around with a couple other ones trying to figure out what I was going to use. But I end up sticking the spider web down by her feet. There it is. Then you just attach your clip. The clip is what's going to hold it together, especially once you put candy in it. It's not going to stay together by itself. But if you don't have a clip, you can, after you fill it, you can just either use your hot glue gun to shut it or um, some you know, double-sided tape, whatever you want to keep it shut. I, I wanted to be able to open and close it because once they take the candy out, that it's, it's a really cute decoration to keep for next year. So I made a couple of them, and there they are. That's it for my little rice toppers. I think those are my favorite project out of all the ones that I made out of this kit. And next, these are the little brown bags that also came in the kit. And I made three of them, showing you three different ways to kind of gussy up the little, the little brown bags, treat bags. And I've already filled all of these up with candy. And I'm sending them off um, in a box to as a gift to, to someone. So... I don't have them to take pictures of again, so I didn't take the best of pictures this time, but oh well, it's okay. So I'm only going to show you how I made this one. Um, I'm just taking my stitched square dies and cutting out some of the papers from the kit, and just super, super fast. This is so quick. I'm just going to layer a couple of squares on the front of the bag, and then pop up my little the little ephemera pieces that came in that also came in the kit and this is the three three little kit there's some individual ones which you've already seen and then this is the one where all three of them are together 
and I'm going to pop them up with a little bit of foam adhesive right in the middle. And then I took one of the the uh, banner die, I mean banner sentiments that came in it, and those little bratties, little ghost bratties, also came in the kit. So I'm going to attach one of the little ghosts to the banner, and then just put that. I'm going to attach it right to the bag. I'm just going to use my crocodile since it's out and make a hole. Put the little ghost bratty through that. And then use one of the one of the uh, clips, 8 million clips that I have to hold it shut and that's that one. So that's the quickest way to do it. Um another way that you can dress up your bag is like this with just stamping directly onto the bag with the sentiment using some puffy stickers that's the boo from the ghost and just making a little banner holding it together with a paper clip or this one here is um I just use my pencils to color in a little scene on the bag and a sentiment from the stamp set so that's a couple ways that you can dress up the little brown bags that came in the kit and for my last project this is kind of like a card and and a project. So this is just a four and a quarter by four and a quarter card and I'm using the cream card that came the cream card stock that came in the kit. Um, I'm going to use orange that's from my stash because I used up all the orange that came in the kit and that is four by four and then three and a quarter by three and a quarter of the pattern paper that came in the kit. And then I'm, I cut out a black strip, which is only, it's an inch and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm just going to put that down the side. A couple more squares. This is another super easy, quick card. I, I love these layering. Me and my layers. That's the cream card. And that one is the two and two by two is the orange and one and three quarter by one and three quarter is the cream. That's another little sentiment strip from the ephemera kit, the pumpkin and the flowers from the ephemera kit. So super fast card. It's going to pop up the little sentiment to go underneath the little squares. It's kind of washed out because of the lights. But that's a real pretty white pumpkin that came in the came in the ephemera pack. And there's the little flowers. In person, it's not washed out. It's just my lights. This is what I get for doing this at three o'clock in the morning. I'm a night shifter. I work nights, so everybody else is in bed and I get to play uninterrupted. So now here's the project part. Um, I wanted to make one of those little um, page keepers for your books. So I took a little piece of the cream paper, which is just the uh, one and three quarter by three and a half. And then I took a little pattern piece of the pattern scrap paper, one and a half by three and a quarter. And I put it, just attached it right to the cream um, back. And then I scored it at two inches. And now I'm taking these little cheapy little magnets that I had in my stash, but you can, you can, everybody sells these magnets. But these ones are terrible. I would get a little bit stronger ones, but not super strong, not like the ones that you would use for your stamp platforms, but something a little bit stronger than what I used. And then it's just a little ephemera piece that came in the kit, the boo and the little ghost bratty. And I'm going to just put the little ghost bratty on the boo. And I'm going to attach that directly to the page keeper. And then whoever you give this to it, it kind of I think I like putting it on the inside of the card and then you just put the card in the mail like that with your little sentiment and your little note inside and then the, they can use that for their book to keep the page in their book and it's thin enough to not destroy your book um, you don't you know, don't want to stick big fat thick things inside of books or it kind of messes up the books but so that finishes up that project here is the card also that I did um, the other video for which I'll put a link on here to that video 
because that would be card number five. And thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. I hope this gives you some um, ideas for what to do with the October 7 says stamp Halloween kit. And I will see you again next time with the next project. Have a great week. Bye-bye.